two roads diverged in a wood. I took the one less traveled by. And that, my friend, and that, my friend, has made all the difference, all the difference. Robert Frost's immortal lines are an apt testament to Rakesh's own life. Rakesh was ever ready to make his own path, ever ready to march to his own convictions. Hello, everyone. I'm Ramesh Damani, welcoming you back to part two of our tribute, Remembering Rakesh on Wizards of the Street. In this episode, continuing with us are Bhaskar Bhatt, Director Tata Sons, Utpal Shet, CEO of Rare Enterprises, Amit Gola, partner at Rare, and joining us for his take, Burgess Desai, former managing partner, J. Sagar Associates. Gentlemen, welcome again to another episode. Burgess, you just joined us. Let me start with you. Do you remember your first meeting with Rakesh? Yes, I do. It was Talk to us about it. Sometime in the uh, mid-90s, uh, there was a company called Praj, uh, of which we all heard of, uh, in which one of the substantial shareholders wanted to divest his uh, equity. And that was the occasion on which I met him first time. And he said that it is overvalued, the price which the shareholder was asking for. Uh, and I said, okay, look, this is a company which is on a rock-solid foundation and I can vouch for its integrity and the commitment of the vision of, of the promoters. So he says, Bhavaji, you don't give me lessons on uh, <laughs> uh, how to value stocks. Uh, and then uh, within 15, 20 minutes, he said, I'm going to go by what you say much against my Instincts. discretion and I'm going to buy it. So he, uh, today by, if you take into account all the corporate actions which took place over the years, I think it was worth about, at nine rupees he bought the stock. Right. That today's Another price. of his legendary investments. But yes. just from what I understand, you didn't bond over that, you bonded over horse racing. You both bet on stocks called Sensex and Nifty, is that right? That horse racing came much, uh, much, much later, several years later. And it was, uh, uh, I very unwittingly uh, had to get into horse breeding because of some distress sale made by a friend, although I knew very little about horses. And uh, after about five or six years, uh, Rakesh was introduced by some other friends to horse racing. And then he said that, why don't we own some good horses together? So we bought a horse which was named Sensex. Sensex and uh, Nifty are here. Which, but, but just so let Nifty me ask. did, Nifty won several races. <laughs> and Sensex didn't run at all. <laughs> uh, and uh, there was uh, another horse which was very cheap and which went on to win against all odds the Hyderabad Derby. It was very appropriately called Mahateji. Mahateji, right. That's the long shot that Rakesh always bets on. Burgess, you talked about Praj Industries and I know you're part of several other deals with him. Rakesh had this unique ability to sniff out promoters. Yes. Uh, what was his smell test? So I said, apart from the, all the usual due diligence and uh, uh, various other things, I think he had a very natural instinct. You know, I would like to compare it to uh, rather sort of uh, flippantly to trained pigs being uh, made to pick up truffles from the ground. So he had a really a nose, nose for, for the this. promoter. He did make a few mistakes, uh, particularly when he uh, uh, would, uh, would go by the reasons other than uh, uh, sort of uh, rational decision making out of relationships, etc. But he was quick to admit them. Uh, but uh, he had a very uncanny uh, sense of knowing uh, who's going to do what. And he had a very keen and a detailed eye. So many, I have seen so many promoters very uncomfortably squirm when he reminded them what they of the, what they had said at the time of investing. Uh, Amit, one of the things that uh, your boss always used to say mm. was invest first, investigate later. Was that true? No, I don't think so, Ramesh. That was true. Uh, there are several examples which I can tell you. So, while this was his favorite line, I think the thinking behind that was way beyond and deep. See, at he, as I told you, he was working 24 by 7. Okay, He was always 
looking at opportunities, he was evaluating sectors. It, he might be there or he might not be there in that sector. But it did not mean that he was not thinking about it. So what that meant was when an opportunity came, he was always well prepared that he could take the decision very quickly. For example, if you take Akasa, in Akasa, he, he was always bullish on airlines. He had invested in Indigo, he had invested in SpiceJet, but somehow nothing worked out. And then when this opportunity came, the sheer brain power, horsepower, which he brought to the table, he could evaluate it very quickly and he closed it in 48 hours. So it was not... The so entire deal in 48 hours. Yeah, so you Amazing. might say it is invest first and investigate uh, later, but that's not the case. He had done his homework prior and kept doing Enough. his homework. Yeah, out yeah, there. yeah. Good yeah. enough. Uh, Amit, uh, Bhaskar made a good point about Akasa Airlines. You had Tata SI Airlines. Was there rivalry or did you tell him anything about airline business? I think the Akasa story, in a way, reflects Rakesh's belief in India, okay? There's no doubt, you know, that Indians are going to have a, want a better way of traveling. And there is no other country in, by 2030, India will be the third biggest uh, uh, you know, aviation market, market in, this, uh, in the world. And it's just going to go. 500 million people, 540 million is the number of you know, people over to fly from the, from the current high pre-COVID, the 140 million. You know, it's, it's going so to... So almost be, one in three Indians. Yeah, it's just... No, the, yeah, the number of people who are going to fly. So there's no question. Now, how to skin that cat is left to the management and to the investor, you know? Utpal... He was wide known for his circle of friends. He was the life of the party. But yet, some friends were closer than the rest. Who were part of his kitchen cabinet? I think, uh, of course, Radha Kishanji, RK yourself. Ramani, of course, yes. Um, I think Kalpraj, Amal, Madhu. They were very close to him in the last few years. Very close, yes. Correct. Amit, let me uh, come back to you. I find it fascinating that a boss, a man of such fortitude, ability to look around corners, uh, to grasp the unknown, was so casual about his health. Why? Ramesh, one word I can say for that, hubris. Really? It was just hubris. See, what had happened, Ramesh, he had got everything which he wanted right from the time he started his life in the stock market. He came to the markets against all odds. He became successful. He started off talking about becoming a billionaire when the word even millionaire was not used. And he became a billionaire. He wanted a large and happy family, though late he got that also. He wanted respect. He wanted to be at a particular level. He got that. So I think he always believed that he'll be able to dodge this bullet. But... We, we, so he just felt that the yeah. sure His adrenaline would pass him through. Yeah, that this would, he would be able to see this through also. But as you remarkably pointed out, Amit, that despite his obvious trouble for the last two, three years, he never complained. I will tell you one episode. I'll never forget that in my life. He was finally eating salt-free food. And one day he called me to the hospital and he said, have food with me. I was not even able to swallow that stuff. And he said, Khana maja to hai. Kya problem hai? I said, Bhaiya, are you serious? He said, jo karna padta hai, karna padta hai. Don't complain. Can you imagine that man? Yeah, we have the feet on this world, but unfortunately, he was not able to walk yeah. for the last yeah. few months of his life. Everything you ever wanted is on the other side of fear. As we go into a break, let's look at some of the tweets about Rakesh Junjanwala. And welcome back to Wizards. Only those who will risk going too far can possibly find out how far they can go. Continuing our discussion of Rakesh's improbable journey through the Lal Street. Uh, Burgess, let me get back to you. Uh, Rakesh appointed you trustee, executive as well. Uh, did he anticipate, did he have a foreboding about his passing away? No, he was a very uh, meticulous uh, planner. Uh, his prime concern was always his family uh, and his partners, like Amit Upal and Amit. Uh, and contrary to what people believe that he was very erratic, etc., when it came to his estate planning for the family and future, it was done in a very systematic way. The children's trusts were formed almost seven or eight years ago. Really? Uh, 
and uh, they hold very substantial uh, investments. Uh, but these are forever uh, investments? Uh, no, these are private family trusts. No, but the investments yes. in those, those trusts holding, yes. are they to be held to, yes. to maturity are, to the yes, children? Yes, so these are long-term investments. And uh, that is the philosophy which the uh, investment committee which he has constituted, uh, which also comprises Utpal and Amit, uh, that is the philosophy with a, which is being recommended, that these are uh, long-term investments not to be disturbed easily unless some uh, event requires uh, divestment. Amit, uh, I know one time he was practically giddy at the prospect of meeting the Prime Minister uh, when Modiji called him. What was that like for him? So that was the high point of his life, Ramesh. Uh, that was a trip he was really happy to make. Utpal was there and I was also there for some bit. We didn't see the Prime Minister but we were with him all the time and he was genuinely happy. I think about the last five, seven years when Utpal, am I right? He was happy. That trip was a trip which he felt good about. He felt he was being respected. He felt his views were being taken into consideration. And he was happy on that trip. So that was the high point of his life. It was the protest. first time that I remember in 30 years that someone from the last street was honored in New Delhi. Yeah, that was, if I may use the word, that was the crowning of... <laughs> I, I, I couldn't dis uh, disagree with you. That was the crowning of Rakesh. Uh, but Utpal, talking about the Prime Minister's visit, uh, I know Rakesh made a presentation to the PM and I'm sure you helped him with it. What did he tell the PM? What did he want to tell the Prime Minister? Um, Rakesh used to make these presentations and the theme was always consistent. You know, it's not right for me to say what was in the presentation to the PM, but in general, all his presentations had his strong belief in India, has his, had his strong conviction about how India will prosper and Indians will prosper and what a virtuous cycle that is going to be. His maxim that uh, he has held for the last 30 years is be bullish on India. And that framed so many parts of his life, right? How he invested, how he viewed life, the optimism in him. Correct? True. Uh, if I may use one phrase of his, he would say the greatest risk of investing in India is not investing not in investing India. Not investing in India, correct, absolutely. Amit, uh, I'm sorry, Utpal. Uh, briefly, uh, if someone were to ask you his investment philosophy, share that. What are the main tenets of that according to you? And take me through a transaction that happened uh, in the last few years of his life that you were particularly in awe of or you really enjoyed. Okay. Rakeshji was a unique combination of a deep value investor who was also a growth investor and a terminal value focused investor. I have not seen any other investor who combined all Marries three. Marries those two. That was Jakes was saying in the earlier episode, yes. Yes. All he had a very simple investment philosophy. He would look for the size of the opportunity, the competitive edge that the company had, the quality of the management team, the scalability and operating leverage, and lastly, the divergence between price and value. But he could filter all of these variables in his mind. And make so, it look easy, actually. So quickly. He was so quick at decision making. It was amazing. Paske, you also knew the investment professional Rakesh. You also knew his family over time. If I would ask you, when his children were young, when children are young, and when they grow up, they ask you, what kind of person was my dad? What would you tell them? Only one phrase I would use. <clears throat> Everybody knows him as an investor in, of, in companies. I felt he was an investor in human beings. I, the human quality of the man is not well, I know it from very, very personal, you know, interactions. Uh, therefore, even as Utpal was saying, the, he could, you know, assess people very quickly. And in Titan, frankly, the first thing he said was, when I walked into his <coughs> office and I saw the people, I felt like investing in this place, you know. And at that time, 
watches was the bigger business and he had great faith in the watch business forget about the jewelry business jewelry business yeah. so it was the combination of what he smelt in the place perhaps uh, and w what he saw in the people and some interaction with me so that the intuitive investor is what i would say but investment in people <laughs> rather than only in the company utpal i will ask both of you this final question uh, you are custodians of his legacy you're both his partners what is the most important learning that you both have and how, what was the legacy that you think we need to promote amit i'll start with you so we've discussed rakesh ji for the last hour or so and uh, we all know what he has done his legacy is like just status quo maintain what he has done we need to his kids are young his family is young we need to make sure that they are taken care of things are done we don't mess around in any way keep it very straight keep steady it very simple goes. and steady Upa. as she goes yeah you know what i've learned from him is your patience may be tested but your conviction will be rewarded and i think the belief that he had in indian entrepreneurs and management team i think it's his greatest legacy and is being vindicated as you say and so just i'll give you the last word uh you wrote a very nice obituary of for him which i read and you said in that that you're willing to bet even in heaven he's not still he's creating a rumpus is that true i think he was possessed by some kind of an extra terrestrial energy you know which was i mean anybody how can anybody be so so much of a flush of adrenaline 24/7 and uh, despite such bouts of ill health particularly in the last two or three years there was so much pain so much discomfort uh, i mean bound or towards a wheelchair but his mind the 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 uh, the, uh, the optimism the innate optimism always his, shown through and his love for india that india is going to be having the greatest bull run in the next 10 years which he said in the last 3 months so i think uh, you, you know you're right by just when you say that he would have yes. almost stars in his eyes yes <laughs> but let's move on let's we've had a nice serious discussion about the life and legacy of a friend of all of us and one of the great icons of the indian capital markets let's do a rapid fire okay let's see what answers you guys come out with okay so i'll start with uthpal uh, no brainer his favorite stock of all time Titan. <laughs> yes, we knew that. So I won't even go around the table. But uh, I'll start with you again. A maxim you remember him the most for. Your first loss is your best loss. Okay. Uh, did you hear any of his maxims, uh, Bhaskar? Yes, I did. When uh, something came in the papers about a raid on his, uh, and I was still MD, and I was very worried. I called him. He said some. This was in Hindi. He said, "Look." i am a diamond in a sack of coal <laughs> you know we uh, the image of this this <laughs> investing world right. we i'm still a broker uh -huh. i'll always be a broker so right. i'm happy this has happened because i will come out clean so i am the diamond in that fearless <laughs> amit you, what is your favorite maxim a phrase that i can't pronounce it fully like uh, badare 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 levanu ghatae ghatae bechvanu yeah, that one which yeah. is buy on strength sell on weakness, weakness don't yeah. don't try and bargain hunt out yeah. there Did you hear any of his maxims, Burgess? Not really, but he always used to say, "What prediction does Ganesh Ji have for me?" <laughs> <laughs> okay, good enough. His favorite Bollywood movie or song? Name one. Oh, my dear, Zohar Jabi. From the film Vakt with Balraj Sahni. Me? His, you used to used sing to, with him. I know that. He used to. He 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 said this was the national anthem of India at that time. That Amitabh Bachchan, his son. Uh, uh what is it called um, bunty or bubbly hmm. that song from bunty or kajra re kajra kajra love you amit you have any memories of film uh it's the same kajra you actually dance in your house to that song that was the last uh, last uh, famous video like you share horses you share so a no, after a few drinks he always used to sing this song maine pe sharab tune kar kya aadmi ka khon bajis his best quality i think is quick fire ability to apologize after one of his famous violent outbursts and his worst quality not looking after his health amit compassion best and worst was like he didn't look after himself baskar 
his human quality of understanding and instinct, and his worst quality, same, not looking after himself. Yeah, that's almost unanimous. I guess you also agree the worst. What would you say his best quality is, uh, Utpal? I think judging people and sustaining relationships. Can you give me a global investor, uh, Utpal, uh, or a promoter whom he admired? He admired George Soros tremendously, and I think the marquee trade of $1 billion betting against the pound sterling. There were so many lessons from that that he uh, learned and talked about. One quote I would use here is, it doesn't matter how many times you are right and how many times you are wrong. How much money you make when you are right, absolutely. Bhaskar, what about you? Uh, any investor or promoter that I, he told you he admired? Uh, qu quite, quite unequivocally a big admirer of the Tata group. And whether it was Mr. Ratan Tata or the current chairman, Chandra, he would, he, he would have... Unabashed admirer. Unabashed admirer. And it was always not for the investment <laughs> return, but for the values of the group. And he would repeatedly talk about it. I, I don't know about investor promoter, but a politician I know he deeply admired was Winston Churchill. Yeah. Amit? Uh, anyone comes so to mind? So, other than uh, George Soros, it's Mark Faber. Uh, like he, he's, of course, a very colorful character. Visited him in Bombay. Yeah, yeah, so. Burgess, did he tell you anyone? I think he just couldn't see beyond Tatas. <laughs> okay, good enough. Last question, gentlemen. First to you, Burgess. Other than the birth of his children, when did you see him happiest? 25th wedding anniversary, 50th birthday in Mauritius, or when Titan became a 100 bagger? I think it was to the extent I remember uh, it was in Mauritius when he celebrated his birthday. 50th? 100%. 50th. 50%. Not when Tata Titan became a 100 bagger? No, Mauritius. Utpal, that's is come next true. to that swimming pool. <laughs> he was, he was a he, mood. You know, the difference is he was happy when others were happy. happy. Whereas we are happy when we are happy. And making others happy made yeah, him happy. 100%. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. That was a wonderful rapid fire. To conclude our special tribute, remembering Rakesh. Allow me to share a poem by Henry Van Dyke entitled Katrina Sundial to honor his memory. Time is too slow for those who wait, too swift for those who fear, too long for those who grieve, too short for those who rejoice. But for those who love, time is eternity. Memories of him will linger with us for an eternity. Farewell, Khuda Hafiz and Alvida to my dear friend Rakesh. Goodbye and see you all next week on another episode of Wizards.